Michael, the question of race is one of the fundamental social issues and problems that um, we face in, in the U.S. and really all over the world. Uh, what can philosophy of biology, which directly analyzes human species, race, uh, what, what can it bring to this debate? Well, I think, I suspect most philosophers of biology like me <coughs> are fairly liberal. Um, I'm not saying they all are, but fairly liberal. So our first inclination is to kind of deny race, as it were, to sort because of stress. Because race has been a problem. Yeah, uh, stress uh, that uh, we're to... all one. Well, obviously we're not, because, I mean, in the sense, we are different. I mean, black people are black people, white people are white people, but no question about that. So, uh, so where do you go from there? And I think if you're a philosopher, you're interested in two aspects. What is the truth, epistemology? And what is the morality, ethics? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. How do we deal with it? Yeah. Well, I think that we've made huge advances, even in my lifetime, in my half lifetime, on understanding the nature of human beings, as it were, genetically take, I mean, I don't mean how we bit bipedal, but genetic differences. And I think we've learned a number of things. First, obviously, skin color is genetic. And more than that, we've learned a lot of reasons why there are differences, why people in the North tend to be white, people in the South tend to be black. I mean, there are differences. Uh, apparently, those races, those indigenous people who live on the coast in the north, close to big supplies of fish, get lots of, is it vitamin C that you need to get, that you don't get, if, that's why they're white, but they don't need that. And so they tend to be black, or not black, but significantly darker. So we know, for instance, that there are genetic differences and our, as it were, natural selection fueled reasons for these differences. Now, does that mean then we've got sort of basically two different kinds and that's all it is to it? Well, no, because it was in 20 years ago, a study came up which shocked a lot of people, which showed, in fact, that you can find out an awful lot more differences between groups of people taken, if, and if, you know, there was one group in, I think, in northern Pakistan, which had a different kind of language and people often thought there's something different. And they did genetic studies and there were differences. Now, that said, the differences were minute. I mean, there, for instance, there are clearly different subspecies of, of gorillas and chimpanzees. There's nothing like that with humans. And mm. look, people like Lewington you know, may have had ideological reasons for arguing this, but it, it's very clear there is variation in human beings, but the amount is pretty, very small, mm. very small. Doesn't mean to say there isn't any. Uh, uh, maybe a group is genetic drift rather than selection, mm -hmm. but they clearly are. So that's on the table. Now, what we do know now is a lot more about how we've moved around and how we've moved out of Africa. And thanks to uh, ancient DNA, we're learning new things. I mean, for instance, something I never knew, the English are so pleased about being English, this, you know, this little stone, this uh, set of the silver stone, you know, that sort of thing. We, we are English and the rest of you are not. Mm. Well, it turns out there was, what, 5,000 years ago, the beaker folk came from, came from Europe and pushed out all the Brits. Mm -hmm. and so we are all immigrants. Mm -hmm. The people who built the Stonehenge are not the people who stand around in Stonehenge now and do silly things at, you know, mm -hmm. at, at, at June the 20th, at the summer solstice or anything like that. So we know that there's been a huge amount of variation like that. So one of the things you ask, most obviously, you're dealing with race is what about intelligence? What are the, and as far as I can make out, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to think that black people are any less intelligent, genetically speaking, than white people. It doesn't mean to say there aren't going to be cultural differences. Oh yeah, it's like as I, you know, I've said about women, the cultural differences. It doesn't mean to say though that that it's genetic. It means that culture can be very powerful. Now, I have no reason to think, let's go back to the 18th, 19th century, that somebody like Darwin, who grew up in England, went to school, went to university, got all that education, all of those things, is going to be advanced intellectually mm -hmm. over somebody who you know, lived in you know, the Congo or something like that. So nobody's going to deny that. I mean, to deny that is stupid, because denying that means you're not going to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. If you're so bound up with the idea of saying, oh no, there's no differences, then you're not gonna help anybody. 
But the question is, I think what we've seen is it's, the di there are differences, but the differences are cultural, not genetic. And so that's why, for instance, it, living in America, I'm very keen on programs of diversification and that sort of thing. You might have to do this, but let's make sure that people who are not, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants are not, as it were, pushed into the same group as the rest. I mean, we see this, don't we, say with Catholics. Think of Catholics in the 19th century as we go into the 20th century. Clearly way below white Protestants. Now, was this because Catholics had some genetic defect? No. Or Jews? No. It was because they didn't have the opportunities. <laughs> Jews, for instance. We all know how Harvard wouldn't let Jews in. Right. We know that. We know that. So the point is, what I'm saying is, I think that there are, if you like, racial differences. So these some are genetic. But I see no reason to think that any of these have any significant thing on intelligence, and it's all cultural. We can change it.